Now, before I talk about this, the Nikon F100 with the 28mm f1.8 G series lens, um, I want to give something away to you guys. Basically, every video I do from now on where I'm testing film, I'm going to give away some rolls of film, basically. Send them anywhere in the world. So you don't have to be in New Zealand. You can be anywhere in the world, and I will post them free. So you don't have to pay for any posting. All you have to do is to like the video, comment on the video, comment on film photography, or comment on the content of the video, and be a subscriber to my channel. It's as easy as that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna send you a roll of 35 mil and 120 um, black and white film from Cosmo. Now I know this is a rebranded film, but we're not gonna talk about that in this video. We're gonna talk about the Cosmo film. Now I will send these two anywhere in the world to you. And in two weeks, I will pick a winner and I will post their name in my community page. And then hopefully you'll get in contact with me. And that will happen with every video I do from now on. Um, which is to do with film photography. I will send you guys some rolls of film so you can test the film for yourself. Now, let's get down to this, which is the Nikon F100 and the 28mm 1.8 G series lens. Now, this is a modern lens. This is a nano-coated lens, and it's on a very, not, well, old, not very old, um, Nikon film camera, an SLR. Now, this is the last, in my mind, of the great SLR cameras. Um, really good value for money you can pick these up very cheap i picked this one up with a 50 mil 1.8 d series lens and a battery grip for 200 new zealand dollars which i think is about 140 150 us dollars absolute bargain the lens i also picked up second hand um i think that was around about 600 new zealand dollars if you want to find out more about the f100 um the link will pop up here to a video i did a while back on why i think this is the best film camera for beginners and let that debate start again. <laughs> but I honestly do believe this is the best camera. If you're coming from a mirrorless or a digital SLR background and you wanna start shooting film, you wanna make it as easy for yourself as you can, then the F100 is my recommendation. So let's talk about this camera combo. Now, the Nikon F100 is a 35 mil film camera, basically SLR. So it has a prism in the top, it sees through a mirror and you see through the viewfinder at the back. It's as easy as that. It's very much like any modern camera now. Even the ones have an EVF, that's an electronic version of this. This is an optical version. The F100 will work with almost every F mount lens that Nikon have ever made, manual and autofocus. Some of the newer autofocus lenses, I believe, won't work with this. Um, you can't control the aperture. Um, I'm not sure which models that is, but I do know it's a few of them, not too many. So it's always good to check out your local dealer or your local shop and ask them which of the new G series lenses will work with an F100, F6, F5, F4 even. Now this lens, like I said, is a modern lens. Now this is a G-series lens and it's nano-coated, so it has the anti-glaring on it, which is designed for digital, really. Um, it's a bit plasticky, I have to admit, but all of the 1.8 lenses like this, the 35, the 20, the 85, or the 50, they're all very plasticky, but they are a really, really good lens. They've got a, if I can take this off, they have a metal mount at the back and they're still really well made. It just makes them a little bit lighter and a little bit cheaper, really. Um, you can pick these up for an absolute bargain, these 28mm f1.8s. For some reason, most people don't want them. I think they're a great lens to have. Um, they remind me very much of my Leica combo, which is a Leica MP and a 28mm Summicron, which is an f2, and this is an f1.8. So they're very close to each other. Obviously, the Leica costs a lot more than this combo, but if you want to start out for street photography, I love 28mm for street photography, and I think it's the best lens to have because it really brings you closer to your subject, and it helps you frame better. Um, not a fan of 50 mil for street photography. 35 is a bit too close to 28 for me, so that's why I shoot 28. Now I focus on all my cameras, I back button focus, auto focus. Obviously with my manual cameras, I just manual focus. But I back button focus here, and then I fire the shutter from the shutter button. And I found the 28 mil f1.8 G lens really fast. Even on an old camera like this, it was focusing really fast, and it was spot on where it's focusing. It was, it hit the mark straight away, and it didn't refocus or anything, even in continuous auto focus. It was really, really nice on there. I was quite Quite surprised at how well this focused on this old camera to be truthful because this does have an older focusing system but they work really well together now the one downside is manually focusing on this it's not very good i'll have to be honest this is a very it's, it's a horrible manual focus and even when you switch it to manual focus and you get your dot confirmation inside your viewfinder which on a nikon you get two little arrows and then a dot pops up and that dot tells you you're focused it wasn't actually in focus. I don't know what it is. Um, it just was out a little bit. Um, it's not user error. This was camera and lens error. I don't know what was going on. But to be honest, I don't know why you would manual focus this lens when the autofocus works so well. It is a really nice system to have. It's very comfortable. It's very easy to carry around. And it worked incredibly well on the F100. Now, in the minute, you'll see a slideshow of a roll of 35mm film that I shot in here. I got 37 shots out of that roll, which is pretty good. 
um, and you will see some of the photos. Now, one of the photos is of an Aston Martin I shot through a fence or um, a gate, basically. In the viewfinder, it was focused. The dot came up, I was spot on focusing, but actually the photo is slightly out of it. Now you'll see that because you're gonna see every photo that I took with this camera combo in the slideshow. That's the only downside to this lens and this camera combo is the manual focus. It's not a nice experience to be truthful. It's, it's quite nasty. So I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but to be honest, you don't need it when the autofocus is so good with this F100 and this lens, I don't know why you would manual focus to be truthful. Now let's talk about this, which is Cosmo Photo Mono, which is a black and white film. It's a hundred speed film. Now I went out yesterday morning at about eight o'clock, went out for a wander around the corner from the gallery. Um, there's a lot of car dealerships around there and they've got some really cool reflections in the glass and there's some beautiful British and Italian cars there and some Japanese cars too. So very nice Japanese cars. Um, so I thought I'd shoot a roll of film with the F100 and the 28mm f1.8 G series lens. I know this is a rebranded film, but I'm not gonna talk about this in this video because I don't wanna talk about it, to be honest. I just wanted to shoot with this and I think their packaging is absolutely amazing. It's the coolest packaging I've ever seen for a brand of film. Um, and it's actually a nice film to shoot. Um, I got 37 shots out of a roll, so I've got a bonus shot as well. It's a 36 roll, I actually got 37. Um, it's a very flat black and white film. I would say it's not Tri-X, definitely not Tri-X, and it's, yeah, it, it's a nice film. Um, it's a little bit expensive, um, especially here in New Zealand, but it's actually a nice film to shoot. Now, what are the photos you're about to see uh, shot with this camera combo? Um, they were shot on one roll of Cosmo Photo Mono, which is a 100 speed film, and I developed them in Cine Steel Monobath DF96. Now, that is a three minute solution for black and white film. Basically, you can develop your film in three minutes, which is great. And then I scanned them with the Panasonic Lumex S1R and a 100mm Canon macro lens. And then I put them into Lightroom and then I converted them all with Negative Lab Pro. Now, if you wanna find out more about how I developed my film in three minutes with Cine Steel DF96 Monobath and how I basically take my film out of the canisters without a darkroom, the links to those two videos will be down below in the description. So what did you think of the film? Did you like the look of the Cosmo Photo Mono? It's quite a flat film, I must admit. 
its um, speed is 100, or ISO 100 or ASA, depends on how you want to say it. Um, I quite like the look of it. I can probably see myself using this on a cloudy day with a fast lens, like a 1.4 or f2. Um, I don't think it'd be very good on a real bright sunny day, but you never know. I may be testing it over the next few weeks because I have quite a few rolls of it. Thank you for watching this video and remember to like, comment and subscribe to be in a chance to win a roll of 35 and 120 Cosmo Photo Monofilm. Now I will send these free of charge anywhere in the world. I will pick a winner in two weeks and I will name that winner in my community section on my YouTube channel.